The European Commission says Italy is continuing to break EU rules over its ballooning debt and that disciplinary measures are justified. The announcement marks a resumption of hostilities between Brussels and Rome, which were sparked by the government's budget plans unveiled last year. If EU members agree, Italy could face financial sanctions worth billions of dollars, as well as tighter scrutiny of its fiscal policies. The populist coalition government narrowly averted such measures in December. It had to lower its budget deficit target for this year from a planned 2.4% of GDP to 2.04%. The EU had set a target of below 1%, while its general deficit limit still stands at 3% of GDP. Italy has the second largest debt in the EU after Greece. It's $2.6 trillion or 130% of its GDP. And the EU is worried that Rome's tax and spending plans will have a snowball effect. If taken, disciplinary steps could result in a fine of 0.2% of Italy's GDP or nearly $4 billion. Rome could also face the suspension of billions of dollars in EU funds and closer monitoring by Brussels. We know that there is a path for recovery and growth uh, to Italy. Uh, other member states have already taken it with success. This uh, path follows a renewed reform effort and not spending uh, more when there is no fiscal space to do so. Well, for more on this, Klaus Vistesen joins me now from Newcastle in the UK. He's the chief Eurozone economist at research consultancy Pantheon Macroeconomics. Welcome back to Money Talks, Klaus. So we know Rome and Brussels brokered kind of an, an easy truce in December over Rome's budget. But since then, uh, debt has continued to rise. Do you think Italy deserves to be punished for this? I don't know. I think what's going on here is a little bit of a saber rattling because uh, the, the commission is kind of trying to see whether it can use the traditional means it has at its disposal to uh, to push Italy um, a little, to push the Italian government a little bit around here and get them to uh, to play ball. The problem is that's not very likely. In fact, for Salvini, uh, the Italian prime minister or the uh, leader of the the biggest party, sorry, in, in the Italian coalition. This is probably great news. I mean, for him, domestically, to have the EU come after him is probably a good idea. So I think the commission knows this, so there's a little bit back, back, back and forth. Um, the Italian debt situation is precarious, especially this year, with the deficit almost surely go, getting above target because growth is going to be very low. But as long as Italy doesn't threatened to leave the eurozone, which is what markets really fear. I think markets are probably going to take this in its stride and, you know, they, they won't care that much. But um, but as long as it just stays at this level, I think actually markets markets will look through this. Um, and by the way, this fine that, that the Commission and the EU can impose on Italy, we're still a long way away from that. Although at the end of the day, that could happen. But a lot of steps have to be taken for, for us to get to that situation. That's right. And the key step, I guess, is getting other EU member states on board to trigger this so-called excessive deficit procedure. Do you think the majority of EU members will give it the green light? Well, that's a very difficult question to answer. I mean, I think actually Italy, if Italy place its cards slightly better than it has. And by that, I mean, if they are slightly more conciliatory by, by at the same time as making the argument that, look, you know, we have higher unemployment rate than in the rest of the years and we should be allowed to spend. And I actually, I think it could be difficult for the commission to get through with this. But I mean, let me put it like this. The commission would never suggest to fine Italy under the excessive deficit procedure unless it was sure that it had the majority. I think um, I think that that's what that's where we are, which is also where why I don't think we'll necessarily get there. OK, now you mentioned the market reaction uh, earlier today. We saw the FTSE MIB drop by almost a percent. But even if Italy doesn't end up with this multi-billion dollar fine, it, it does send a signal that perhaps Rome can't handle its finances. Do you think that could possibly lead to another kind of punishment in the form of higher borrowing costs? Absolutely. I mean, so Italy, the Italian government has to 
has to make a choice here because they, in some sense, like I said before, it 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 helps them. The, the the current Italian government is helped domestically by fighting sort of the EU and markets. The problem is you can't fight the EU, the ECB, and markets at the same time. You need one of the two on your side. And at the moment, Salvini doesn't seem to have either. And, and so it, Italy has to find a way to get either the markets or the EU on their side. So, for example, in France, Macron is blowing out the deficit as well, but he's pro-EU, he's doing uh, labor market reform. So Italy has to find its way towards that kind of equilibrium. But obviously, at the moment, for Salvini, you know, that he's not going there. But eventually, I think that's where Italy will have to go in order to... Um, to, to get somewhere, to get somewhere instead of just, you know, butting its head against the wall uh, all, all the time at the moment. Yes, as you say, early days yet. We'll see how Rome responds. Klaus Wiesersen, thank you so much for your time.